Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Wanders, and this is week number nine of my ongoing 2023 pantry challenge. I created a small pantry of items that I want to use up, whether they've been in my pantry for too long or I just don't like them and I want to find new ways to use them. I made a small pantry and I've been trying for nine weeks now to use up what's in that pantry. I will leave a link right here to the entire 2023 pantry challenge if you want to watch the whole thing from the beginning. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to see more videos from me and check out the join button for other ways to support my channel. I really hope that the sun comes out soon because I feel like I'm starting to turn into a, like a white walker. I'm getting so pale. I need sun. I take vitamin D, but sun is better, I think. March seems colder than February. What's going on? Definitely getting to the end of the 2023 pantry challenge. You'll have to stay until the end to find out if I have one more week in me or in the pantry. Let's see what I made this week. I was lucky enough to grab a produce box from the Flash Food app for $5 this week. $5 for all this fruit. I do use some uh, fruits in my meals, but I will be including this box in my next grocery haul video. Good morning. This morning for breakfast, we are gonna do up like an egg scramble. I've got some green peppers from the freezer, an onion, this avocado that I bought in the grocery haul. I'm gonna try this Singapore chili sauce that I can on eggs. I've never tried it on eggs before, but I think it'll be pretty good. It's not too spicy. It's kind of like a sweet, sweet taste to it with the raisins that are in it. And then I'm gonna use more kale, more kale. <laughs> So just an omelet or a scramble of salt and pepper. Yeah, for breakfast. About a quarter of an onion. Green pepper. Kale. Put kale in everything. Maybe just like a half a teaspoon of kale. Probably added about a, two tablespoons of water, a little bit of salt, some pepper. Yeah, just a scramble. really good onions and peppers this is definitely turning out to be the pantry town season of kale <laughs> this is kale and everything i'm really enjoying the fact that i can put it in everything and i can't i can't taste it it's really great getting all those greens i really thought i would be able to taste it but not so much not that i don't like kale but you maybe don't want everything to taste like kale all the time so it's kind of handy Feel like you're being healthy and stuff. Some more fresh greenery. Some avocado. Avocado. Then I do want to try this Singapore chili sauce on the eggs. I think it's gonna be perfect, so not even worried about it. It's not too hot. Nice and kind of sweet. Hey, avocado. What are we trying? Just s scrambled eggs with kale, I guess. That's <laughs> what we used from the pantry. Kale, more kale. Can't really, can't really taste it. Kind of just a hint of it, maybe. And this chili sauce is super yummy, like I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I wish I tried it on eggs sooner. Mmm, mm-hmm. Pretty sweet, but really good. Maybe a bit sweeter than ketchup. Mm-hmm. Breakfast. Kale breakfast. 
Good morning. This morning for breakfast, I am going to make a suggestion from Mr. Wanders. He found a recipe for cottage cheese pancakes, and I am going to give it a try. I'll leave a link in the description below for the recipe that I'm going to try to follow. It uses cottage cheese, eggs, baking powder, salt, vanilla, and whole grain, more whole wheat flour gonna be able to use up more of this and some maple syrup we're gonna top it with raspberries yeah cottage cheese pancakes i've never made them before so i hope they're yummy the recipe did say if you had drier cottage cheese to have some water to add but i'm pretty sure that this cottage cheese is fairly watery mm, yummy does seem pretty liquidy so I think it'll be okay. Need one cup of cottage cheese. No, I might have to add some water. I'm gonna make up some milk to add just a tablespoon of skim milk powder and mix it with a quarter cup of water. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna have to add more water, but that's okay. Got a quarter cup of milk, I guess. I keep saying water, but it's actually milk. Maybe because Canadian flour is a little different than American flour? Hmm. Probably added a third of a cup of milk to this. I guess this be, might be because of the flour difference, but also the cottage cheese maybe wasn't as liquid as I thought it was. So that's what we've got now. I just kept adding it until it looked like, like a good pancake batter. They smell very maple I think. There we go. Oh, nice. That was three minutes. Very much trying to smell like maple syrup. maple syrup can kind of make it a little bit sticky, I think. Uh, oh, I just lost it. Sometimes when I'm flipping pancakes, I lose confidence. Some of those sticky bits are actually the cheese and they, and they taste really, really good. Melty cottage cheese curds in there. That seem wonderful. Just gonna give them a little butter. Oh. Put some raspberries on top. Frozen raspberries. Just thawed them out in the microwave a little bit with a little bit of sugar. Mm, raspberries and a little more maple syrup you can put some dusting and icing sugar on that 
I'm gonna cut into one of these and see what the inside of that cottage cheese looks like. You can definitely see on the edges that there's cottage cheese in there. And it's like gooey, which is awesome. Well, that's interesting. It's very melty. That's a pretty good flavor. I'm pretty happy with that. Kind of makes me feel like the pancake isn't quite cooked because the cottage cheese is a little gooey, but I think it's good. The fruit's pretty good. Cottage cheese pancake. Who would have thunk that? There's like little bits of cottage cheese that are melty in there. Thumbs up for me. Thanks so much for the suggestion, Mr. Wanders. <laughs> These are really good. And I really like cottage cheese. A little extra protein from your cottage cheese, so that's nice. Using up whole wheat flour. Mmm. -hmm. Yummy. You can really see the cottage cheese is like in there. Good morning. This morning I am making a recipe suggestion from Carrie Bourgeois. I do make rice pudding quite a bit because it is one of Mr. Wander's favorite things. I did find a recipe from the Eagle Brand site that uses sweetened condensed milk. I would say that I don't normally make rice pudding for, with sweetened condensed milk. I think it's got to be super yummy. I'll post a link in the description below for the recipe that I am going to try to follow. Thank you so much, way back in week six, from Carrie Bourgeois to make rice pudding because it'll use up some of my rice from the pantry. And I found a recipe that'll use up this Eagle brand sweetened condensed milk as well. So we're using up stuff. I've got some apples. This is apple cinnamon rice pudding. I've got some apples from the, from the produce box that I got for $5 that really need to be used up. I got some other apples in it too, but these ones I think need to be used up first. What a great deal the $5 produce boxes are from Flash Food. I just gotta say, they are amazingly good deals. So it uses apple juice, butter, I've got some raisins, the sweetened condensed milk, cinnamon, salt, and nutmeg, apples, and then some rice. Usually I use leftover rice to make rice pudding. I don't know if it's gonna be the same. I've got basmati rice, that's all that I have, and that's what I'm gonna use. It also only calls for one apple, but once I cut the bad spots off, I am actually gonna use all five of these apples. If you squish them together, it's like a really huge apple, maybe. Apple cinnamon rice pudding for some breakfasts. I'm sure that Mr. Waters will take it as snacks to work. He just loves rice pudding, so here we go. Three tablespoons of butter. Got about four of those, maybe three and a half of those small apples, and then, then I ate one. I don't know how more apples could be bad, so it asked for one large. I've got three and a half tiny ones, maybe. It'll be fine. Well, that smells wonderful, butter and apples. Mmm. This is gonna be so good. It says to cook these apples for two minutes. Always rinse your rice. Added one cup of rinsed rice and then stir for a minute. One third of a cup of raisins and a half a cup of the apple juice. and keep stirring for another minute. Seems kind of a slow, arduous way to like boil off some of the water maybe from the rice or something. And I'm gonna add the rest of the one and a half cups of apple juice. Just following the recipe. <laughs> one teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Then we're gonna bring that to a boil. We're gonna cover and cook for 20 minutes. It's 15 to 20 minutes or until your rice is cooked.
all this stuff is like gold. I'm not sure what nationality of food it was at a restaurant where I had Sweden condensed milk coffee. There was just a bunch of this in the bottom of, of the mug and then coffee on top and it was really good. Was it coffee or tea? Coffee? coffee or tea one of the two I don't think I was focused on the tea I think I was focused on how much awesome sweet and condensed milk I got to have <laughs> it was so good I'm not sure um what type of food that was that had that but it was yummy that looks like the rice is Smells really wonderful. Okay, we're gonna add the sweetened condensed milk to this. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, we want to mix that sweet and condensed milk up really well. And then we just want to warm that up again. It's already very thick because obviously sweet and condensed milk is very, very thick. This is really quick actually. It only really took as long as it takes to cook rice and chop up some apples. And once it's warmed up, I'm just going to take it off the heat and let it cool slightly. It says it makes four servings. For us, it's probably three servings. You can add whatever you like in there. It's already got apples. You could add some more cinnamon on top. All right, made a lot of rice pudding. Maybe it is four servings. Maybe my eyes are bigger than my stomach. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it. It might be very filling. Look at it, it's so, so thick like instantaneously thick. Usually I make rice pudding and I have to thicken it with, because I use regular milk. Mm. Mm hmm Oh yes. Oh, the big chunks of apple in there. Wasn't bad to add more apple. More apple's good. The basmati rice is fine. I mean, maybe other rice is softer, like a pudding rice or a short grain rice, but I, don't, I like the basmati rice, so it's pretty yummy. Use what you have. Oh. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Carrie Bourgeois. I haven't made rice pudding in some time, and this recipe is absolutely fabulous. Mr. Wanders is going to love it. I'm going to put this one in the fridge for him, and he'll take one to work. He's going to be pretty excited. For breakfast? Sure. Is it kind of like dessert? Maybe. Using up rice and evaporated sweetened condensed milk from the pantry. Yay. The birds are being awfully sneaky. I'm trying to catch something interesting, but basically I've got house sparrows these days <laughs> because I have a new member. Welcome Pam Anderson, who became a member of the channel. I wish it was kind of a prettier time of year and I could do a better chickadee shout out. Yay! You might have heard a chickadee. <laughs> There's a junco hopping around and house sparrows. I've been trying to catch some chickadees for a chickadee shout out. Thank you so much, Pam Anderson, for becoming a member. It really does help support my channel. It's also a really great time to be to be becoming a member right now because as we head into the $21 a week grocery challenge, I'll be releasing uh, my grocery lists to members at the beginning of the week. And then you'll find out what I made with all that stuff at the end of the week. So it's a really good time, Pam Anderson, to be becoming a member. So yay. For some lunches and to keep trying to use up this whole wheat flour, I'm going to make some regular 100% whole grain or whole wheat flour in my bread machine. I've got whole wheat flour, molasses, some honey, salt, yeast, lard, and this, oh, I guess we're using up some skim milk powder as well, one and a half cups of water. 
I'm going to let it go. It usually takes about four hours in the bread machine. I have, I think, made this recipe once before, but I'll leave it up on the screen there. A picture of what I'm using is just from my bread machine, bread maker manual. One and a half cups of water, two tablespoons of powdered milk, two tablespoons of shortening, lardy stuff. Two tablespoons of molasses. I've got some, what have I got? Fancy, fancy molasses. It's a gooey business. Two tablespoons of honey. One and a half teaspoons of salt. And three and a half cups of whole wheat flour, according to the Canadian directions. Apparently our flour is different up here in Canada. And one and a half teaspoons of yeast. Bread type, whole grain, automatically sets the crust color. Start, should say, yeah, four hours and 10 minutes. Takes a little while, but I don't have to do any work, do it. <laughs> yeah, then we'll have some sandwich bread. We have some buns, but no sandwich bread. So there you go. And it uses three and a half cups of whole wheat flour. Yay. Oh, the, uh, Bread didn't rise up too high. Kind of unusual, but there it is. I think it'll be nice. We're gonna use the power of our knife to make sure that this bread just comes right out of here, like no problem. Like nothing's going on. It's just, oh, look at that. It is tiny. I don't know why it's so tiny. That's a bit frustrating. Oh, nice and warm. Gonna let it cool though. Feels really bouncy. Some factors affect bread, and you can never know why. On a side note, I'm dealing with a lot of squashes today. Cooked these up, and I'll scrape the, the soft pulp out and put it in Ziploc bags in the freezer. We're cubing some and putting it in the freezer. This is the cutest little acorn squash. I'm going to cook it up, put some butter in there, and some brown sugar, and just heat it. A little bit of butter. And I have some really crispy brown sugar, but it'll work. Mm. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 400 degrees, probably 45 minutes, I think, at least. Loads of cubed squash going in the freezer. Yeah, little squashes. Can you just eat bread and squash for dinner? Maybe. This smells so wonderful. Get all the brown sugary butteriness everywhere. Mm. Actually, this bread looks really nice. It's not too dense. And I have some avocados that I picked up. I think we're gonna have some avocado toast and that little acorn squash that I did up in the oven for lunch today. Here we go, got some avocado toast and I'm gonna eat these little acorn squashes we have. I'm gonna try my little grapefruit spoon. sure. Yummy. Mm. A little brown sugar and butter in there. It's a, it's a veggie lunch. I'm using up whole wheat flour from the pantry to make the bread. For lunch today, I am going to try to use up some of 
my yellow split peas. I found an interesting recipe that's kind of like a hummus, but it uses yellow split peas, and I'm super interested in it. I'm gonna use a lot of lemony, two lemons, because I like it lemony. I'm gonna cook this split peas with some spices, cumin, bay leaves. I'm gonna top it with paprika, and then I'm gonna use the bread that I made as a dip, but you could use any kind of pita bread or even tortilla chips or something like that would be good. I don't have a red onion. I've just got this yellow onion and uh, I've got some olives that I can put on top. I'll leave a link in the description below for the recipe that I'm loosely trying to follow. It's called a yellow split pea dip. It looks to me in the pictures, it looks a lot like a hummus. So I'm excited. And then of course, olive oil. We are gonna start by sauteing the onions and the garlic in some olive oil. Maybe two tablespoons of olive oil. I think it was supposed to be one small onion, but that's I like more onion. I hate it when I make the mistake of not cooking everything in one pan. I could have just sauteed these onions in the pot. Then I'm going to cook everything in, so we're just going to fix that problem right now. In one pot. And the garlic cloves for a couple of minutes. Lots of garlic. I mean, I've never made a split pea dip before, but I'm just going by what I like in my hummus dips, and I like a lot of garlic and a lot of lemon juice. And then two and a quarter cups of water. One cup of yellow split peas, well rinsed. One bay leaf. One teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of cumin. We are gonna simmer that. for 20, 25 minutes. Till those peas are really, really cooked and mushy. Definitely gonna give these another five minutes. That was 20 minutes and they're not squishy. More minutes. Okay, I think it's done. It took me 40 minutes to do that. Uh, just keep adding water and simmering it until your split peas are mushy. I think they're pretty mushy now. Most of them are pretty mushy. I'm gonna blend them up with my immersion blender. Take the bay leaf out. I did get it. I did get it. Just really had to lean the pot. So it's not perfect. I missed a couple of split peas, but I like that kind of texture in there. So that's okay. I've got three at least tablespoons of lemon juice, freshly squeezed lemon juice. Two, three, and two more tablespoons of olive oil. Mmm, yummy. That's looking nice and smooth. It does definitely smell like um, split peas. <laughs> Like a little bit like like pea soup, which is kind of cool if you like pea soup. I'm going to make this look like hummus because that's what it looked like in the picture. <laughs> so I was excited. I'm like, split pea hummus. I have some olive, uh, I think they're rosemary flavor, which should be okay. Have some extra lemon slices and some loads of paprika carefully. And I got some bits of bread that I can use to dip it in. This looks really interesting. I think it'll be good. Why won't why wouldn't it be good? Mm -hmm. I like that extra lemon. So I'll probably add more. I like it. The olive. 
yeah, that's okay. It's not quite as stiff as a chickpea hummus. It's pretty nice. Again, you can make it as spicy or not spicy as you like. This is just very mm, smooth. If you like split peas, it's a lot. Very tasty like split peas. Split pea dip. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like the little bits of split pea that didn't get puree. They, they add some nice texture to it. This is my yummy lunch. Using up one cup of my uh, yellow split peas from the pantry. Yay. For dinner tonight, I am going to make a lasagna soup. I found a cool recipe. Save me from making lasagna. And it's certainly still soup weather. So I'm going to do up this lasagna soup. I am going to use up my tomato sauce from the pantry. Nothing really else from the pantry. We are going to use up this entire jar of tomato sauce from the pantry. Obviously, it has spices, oregano, parsley, basil. I'm gonna throw some spinach in there. It uses chicken broth for the base of the soup. I've got some mozzarella, cottage cheese parmesan because it's a lasagna soup. A Little bit of tomato paste in there as well. I was doing up squashes today, so I have a little bit left over. And I'm just gonna throw it in there. You won't even notice, you won't even be able to tell. Olive oil, salt and pepper, and one onion and some garlic, of course. And one pound of ground beef. I'll post a link in the description below for the recipe that I am loosely trying to follow. It asks for a half a pound of ground beef and a half a pound of sausage. I'm just using a pound of ground beef. I think it's gonna be a pretty yummy soup. I've never made it before. Pretty excited. Pretty hopeful that this is gonna be really easy and tastes really, really good. salt and pepper to that. Recipe wants me to take the meat out and I don't want to so just gonna throw them all in the pot together but I did drain a bunch of the fat out. One onion. three cloves of garlic and then saute that for about a minute. Yummy garlic. More garlic is better. All right, tomato paste. It's about a third of a can of tomato paste that I had in the freezer. The last tomato sauce in the pantry that I want to use up. Dun, dun, dun. One jar of tomato sauce. plus whatever water I need to rinse it out. Mm. I'm gonna dump this suburb squash in there just cause I have it on hand. No one will ever know. You'll never know. Shh. One teaspoon of dried basil. Two teaspoons of dried parsley. Half a teaspoon of dried oregano. And a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, or however much you like. It asks for seven cups of chicken broth. I'm going to use three of these bouillon cubes. One cube makes two cups. That's probably close enough. Seven cups, three cubes. I put three beef bouillon cubes in there. I wasn't filming it. There they are. See? There's three of those. <laughs> I didn't hit the right button. Okay, we got three bouillon, chicken bouillon cubes in there. And we're gonna bring all of this goodness to a boil. It smells really, really good already. All right, now we're gonna mix up like all the cheeses to go on top of the soup. This is 10 ounces of cottage cheese. Mm. One cup of mozzarella cheese. Whoa. It's 
It's a lot of mozzarella cheese. Half a cup of Parmesan cheese. All the cheeses. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Mix that up. Add a boil. Gonna add spinach. I could ask for a half a cup of fresh spinach. I'm just adding three kind of cubes of frozen spinach. I think it'll be fine. And we're gonna add nine lasagna noodles, broken in pieces. without all the hassle of layering a lasagna. So it seems brilliant. <laughs> all the same taste. Half the effort. Whoa. Yes. Okay, this looks and smells fabulous. Smells just like lasagna. So the idea is you got this wonderful deconstructed lasagna, as Mr. Waters calls it. Soup. And then you put this cheese mixture on top of it. I assume it'll kind of uh, melt on the top. Mr. Water says way more cheese. It needs way more cheese. It does melt in there. This would be good. Ooh. <laughs> it tastes just like lasagna. Lasagna soup. Oh, this is so easy. So fast. Pretty yummy. I agree. You could use a lot more cheese. Okay. That was way faster than making lasagna and tastes really the same. Using up the last of my tomato sauce from the pantry. This is very good. I can see how if you use sausage too, it would be really very good. But this is just fine and really very fast. I can't think of anything I would add to that to make it better. It's pretty good. Very good soup. Yay! Lasagna soup. And some dippy bread. Mmm. That looks amazing. Lasagna in a bowl? Yeah, lasagna that, in a bowl. How could that be bad? Oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Hello. Today for dinner, I'm going to do a recipe suggestion from Cat Is Me uh, to use my tamarind chili cooking and dipping sauce. They suggested that I do a tamarind shrimp recipe over rice. I kind of checked out a bunch of different recipes on the internet and I will post a link in the description below for the one that I am going to try to loosely follow. It is a tamarind coconut prawn curry. Uh, it includes a lot of spices that are in mm. this tamarind chili sauce already like tamarind sugar canola oil ginger and then herbs and spices ginger garlic green chili peppers i think so this is already that made up i guess i hope i hope that that's what it is because i'm just going to use this and i'm not going to make the sauce with all those ingredients mm -hmm. i am going to add some more garlic because i have a lot of that to use up i will serve it over rice this is just basmati rice I'll make up. And I've got these raw black tiger prawns that have been sitting in my freezer for a while. So we're gonna make those. And then coconut milk makes everything yummy from the pantry downstairs as well. Oh, I think I'll probably add some more carrots. I'll add carrots as well. Just add another vegetable to that. Tamarind coconut prawn curry for dinner over rice. So this tamarind chili 
cooking and dimming sauce. Definitely a fear of unknown ingredient ingredient for me. Fooey, fooey ingredient. I don't know why I'm so worried about it. I think it's because when I was in Mexico, I tried some candy that was made with tamarind. It's very common in Mexico. Very common ingredient, tamarind. And you know what? I wasn't super keen on the candies. So I think I'm afraid that I just really don't like tamarind. Um, and this is a full container of it, but let's give it a try. It's pretty oily, like an oiliness to it. Oh, honestly, that just smells really like Indian, actually. Indian, I can eat this on Indian food. So that makes sense. We're gonna make a curry. I think that'll work out perfectly. It's a really strong smell. It smells a little bit sour. Let's try it. Oh, mmm, it's spicy. Oh, why was it? Oh, yep, it's definitely spicy. I'm not gonna add any more peppers to that at all. It has like a freshness to it. That doesn't taste at all like what the tamarind candies tasted like. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That is spicy. That'll go nicely with some coconut. It's very sort of oily. And kind of sour, yeah. Kind of like a sourness to it or something. Oh, I'm not nearly as afraid of this anymore. I think this will be good with shrimp on rice. It'll be fine. I was gonna maybe add some more paprika and some turmeric, because I don't know if it has it in it, but considering how yellow it is, I'm pretty sure it has turmeric in it already. First, I'm gonna get some rice cooking. I'm gonna cook up two cups of rice, which is probably more than I need, but leftover rice is always cool to have on hand. Three and a half cups of water. While I was waiting for the rice, I also peeled all the shrimp. You can leave the tails on if you like to, but I don't. I like my shrimp to be as easy to eat as possible, so I took all the shell off of it and the tails. I guess the tails can add some more flavor to things, but um, I like them really easy to eat. Peeled all my shrimp. We are gonna fry those onions and carrots. A couple tablespoons of just regular canola oil. I have two onions, thinly sliced. Maybe, I don't know, two cups, cup and a half of sliced carrots. Two big cloves of garlic. Extra, you can't have too much garlic, I say. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of this tamarind chili sauce. And the coconut milk. I'm not quite sure how much I should add of that. Like, should I dump in the whole thing? I don't know. So we're gonna try this first. You can see all the spices coming out of that chili sauce. I just want to taste it and see how it is doing. Oh, that's so good. It can handle some more of this sauce, I think. Another quarter cup of that sauce, easily. That's about half of this little jar of tamarind chili sauce. I mean, I guess it depends how much sauce stuff you want too, how, how saucy you want your stuff to be. It's nice to have a nice sauce if you have it served over rice. So I kind of want it to have, but I want it to thicken up a little bit too. It's so much sweeter in that coconut milk. It's crazy good. It's very flavorful. It's not too hot with only half of the jar. So I have another half of a jar of the tamarind sauce that I can use for something else. Just gonna bring this to a boil, cook those carrots a little bit, and then we'll add the shrimp. I wanted those carrots to cook up nice, so I covered it for a little bit. And it's not thickening up quite as much as I wanted it to. That coconut milk that I used 
isn't this as thick as it you know normally is i don't know is coconut milk getting thinner everywhere could be so is there a lack of coconuts that i don't know about maybe anyway we're gonna add all the prawns and cook them till they're pink Shouldn't take more than five minutes. Fluffy rice. All right, this looks amazing. I kind of wish it had gotten a little bit thicker, the sauce, but it smells gorgeous. I love things that are warm. They're just, well, not spicy, they're just like warm. That makes sense. Oh, there we go. There's lots left over. There's probably at least like three or four servings. Wow. Two dinners and two lunches probably out of that. All right, I didn't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting this yumminess. Mmm, that is so good. Mm-hmm. The sauce in the jar, the tamarind sauce, is quite spicy, but when you mix it with the coconut milk, it has a nice little warm kind of back of your throat aftertaste, but it is just so kind of cozy warm, <laughs> I guess. Mm-hmm, not too spicy at all. I love this. The shrimp really goes very nicely with it. The chicken would work pretty well as well, I think, but this shrimp is wonderful in that sauce. The carrots are nice addition. Always wanna get in some more vegetables if you can. That is dinner. Dinner suggestion from Cat Is Me for tamarind curry with prawns or shrimp. And, I, and uh, this, uh, this recipe is really good. Yeah, yeah. yay. I'm gonna go eat this all up. It's so yum. Especially like things that are really easy. This was really easy to make. With that tamarind paste, just add coconut milk and fry some onions and carrots. And it's like you're eating out, eating at a restaurant. And it's so easy to do at home. I love things like that, that taste really fancy, but are pretty easy to make. So that's the end of week number nine. Holy. Why does this always take longer than I think it's going to take? This is everything that's left at the end of week nine. This week, I did continue to use up rice. I used up some whole wheat flour, uh, quite a bit of whole wheat flour, actually. Used a little bit of the kale, the, the jar or tin of sweetened condensed milk, and that tamarind chili paste. I still have half of that left over in the fridge. Some split peas some powdered milk as well, and the one jar of tomato sauce that was left. It was a pretty good week. I think I tried really hard to use up as much as I could. I thought maybe this was gonna be the last week, but uh, I didn't get that far with it. But I did, we did use up a lot of stuff, so I'm pretty happy with it this week. I still have this semolina flour, some rice, graham crackers, graham crackers, graham wafer crackers. I've got one can of evaporated milk, marshmallows, some more, one, I think this is one cup of split peas left. Obviously, more kale powder. I'm not gonna use up all this kale powder by the end of the, by the end of the pantry channel, just so you know, that's not my goal. But I am continuing to try to use it, find new ways to use it. I've got skim milk powder left, some whole wheat flour, although not very much whole wheat flour left. And then these mung beans which I've kind of been avoiding. So that is everything. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can click my face to subscribe, hit the notification bell, I guess, and you'll be notified when I drop new videos. I'll leave links to the entire 2023 pantry challenge if you wanna watch everything from the beginning as well as anything else that I think that you might be interested in. Um, I was really trying hard to get uh, this closed up, used up, done up by the end of this week, but uh, I actually do have some meal ideas for one more week and we can get this 
even lower, even more used up. So I'll see you guys all next time. Thank you so much for being here and watching. Bye.